Good morning, good morning. It is Monday morning, and I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I'm really tired. <laughs> this was a hard morning for me to get up. We've had a long week and weekend, and so I was feeling it today. Really tired today, but you know what? God is good, and I feel strength coming into my body, and I just bless you this morning. I bless you this morning. I bless you as you're coming on this morning. I want to encourage you to share the broadcast. I want to encourage you to just uh, share the broadcast and pray with us and invite your friends to pray with us this morning. Invite your friends to pray with us. When you share the broadcast and when you comment, good morning, or hey, Pastor Callie, or you put a prayer request, what you do is you break the algorithm <coughs> and more people can see the prayer cast, and it allows more people to pray with us. So that's, a lot of times that's what's going on. I'll get messages saying I, I couldn't find you. Well, it's because Facebook is restricting us. So what I need you to do is just share the broadcast and then comment. Say good morning from Vancouver. Good morning from Beaumont. Good morning from Dallas. Good morning from wherever you're at. And um, that will help the algorithm and then it will allow more people to be a part of the broadcast. I want to read a scripture this morning. John 14 and, and 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way. So many times we find ourselves lost in life especially before we got saved. We were lost. He says, I'm the way. I'm the path. I am the truth. And there's a whole generation of people looking for truth. They're trying to find truth. Many times they call it my truth, which my truth is always wanky. God's truth is what's true. I am the way. I am the true truth. And I am the life. We have been redeemed from death because of the death, burial, and resurrection, because of the cross, Jesus died on the cross, he was buried in a tomb, and he rose again. We have been redeemed from death to life. We have been redeemed from lost to the way to be found. And we have been redeemed from chaos and lies to truth. So, Lord, we just thank you that you're the way, you're the truth, and you're the life, and no one, no one comes to you, comes to the Father, but by you. That's how we are saved. That's how we are transformed. That's a, Jesus is the answer. You know, my friend is, uh, Karen, is doing a study at the church uh, called the Red Letter. And uh, she's, they're studying the Red Letters of Jesus. They're studying what Jesus said. And when we begin to eat on what Jesus said, it's a delivering power. It's a freedom power. There's something about the words of our Savior. And so, Lord, I just thank you that you're the way, you're the truth, and you're the life. And that's the scripture today I am musing on. And I want you to encourage you to just get you a scripture or a chapter and muse on it. Just think about it. Just um, allow it to marinate in your soul, Ashram. And it will bring healing and life. A lot of times we think we just have to read through the Bible. And it's important to read the Bible. But I like to take a, a verse or a paragraph or a chapter and just ruminate on it. Just spend time on that one verse and allow it to become part of me. And, and for that verse to actually bring life to me and freedom to me and deliverance to me. So, Lord, we just thank you for your word this morning. We thank you and we are reminded that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. And God, we just, we, we receive that. We walk in holiness. We walk in purity. We ask you to forgive us of all sin. We ask you to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We ask you to change our thought process and our paradigm. Let us look at things the way you look at it. Let us see things the way you see it. Let us comprehend things the way you comprehend. And Lord, I just ask you to, to a move in power and might in our families. Move in power and might in our children. We, need, we, we thank you for what we're seeing happening in our children, 
It is amazing. We are seeing so much revival. We're seeing change. We're seeing healing. We're seeing deliverance happen in our children. But we're asking you, Lord, to complete the work. We thank you, Lord, for what we're seeing in our marriages. But we ask you, Lord, to complete the work. We thank you, Lord, for what we're seeing in our communities and the revival that's breaking out across America. But we thank you, Lord, and we ask you to complete the work. We thank you that revival fires will burn all across America in colleges, in churches, in homes, in coffee shops, in arenas that, that hundreds of thousands, millions of people will receive you as their Lord and Savior, will repent of their sins, be baptized in Jesus' name, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the work you're doing in America and across the world. And across the world. We stand in faith that you are using us and working us into your master plan. We stand in faith that we have put ourselves into the narrative of the greatest revival that mankind has ever known. We have injected ourselves into the narrative by faith that you are going to work in our lives and we will personally be a part of gathering the greatest harvest ever known to mankind. Ever known to mankind. So Lord, I just thank you for the women evangelists that are listening right now. For the women pastors, teachers, prophets, for their husbands, God, for their children. We thank you, Lord, that our children are stepping up to the plate and they're being everything you've, you've asked them to be. Everything you've asked them to be. We give you praise. <coughs> we give you glory. And we give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. I thank you, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Forgive me of the times I've doubted you. Forgive me of the times that I've been in fear. Forgive me of the times that I've second-guessed what you've told me. Forgive me of the times that I, that I had trouble forgiving someone that had hurt me or hurt one of mine. Forgive me, Lord. Help me. Help me to seek you in all things. Help me to seek you in all things. I thank you for a massive outpouring of your spirit in Houston, Texas on April 5th, 6th, and 7th. I thank you, Lord, as they gather into the Texas Tent Revival, that there will be a massive outpouring of your spirit. I thank you, Lord, for signs, wonders, and miracles. That everyone that comes in that tent will be delivered of any kind of problem, any kind of agitation from the devil, any kind of tyranny from the devil. They'll be delivered, set free. Anyone that needs to be saved will be saved and filled with your spirit. Anyone that needs healing will be healed. There'll be signs, wonders, and miracles. I want to encourage you. We are over half full. Uh, are real close to half full in these three nights. Y if you're going to come, you need to go on and sign up. It's free. Uh, if someone, if Chris, if you're on here, if you could just post the event, B, you need to sign up. Bring your teenagers. Sign them up, too, though. Let us know how many you're bringing. You can bring your children that are 10 and up. If they can sit in a chair and listen, because we won't have any daycare, uh, but... <clears throat> our children's ministries there. It's just going to be the, the main tent. But you can sign them up, bring them, if they can sit in a chair and listen and worship. And I'm telling you, God's going to deliver our children. We're going to see our teenagers delivered and set free. He is going to set us on fire. We're going to see a major outpouring of the Holy Spirit on April 5th, 6th, and 7th. And I want to encourage you to go on and get your ticket. It's free, but go on and get your ticket. Um... Uh, and be a part of that, okay? So, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. We, we just trust you. We have faith in you. We know that you're a God, that, that you don't lead us to do something that you're not going to move in power and might. 
and we know you spoke to me. You spoke to me and said, have this revival April 5th. Now, April 5th is the Great Communion Revival that we'll be doing with Lou Engle all across the U.S. And then the 6th and the 7th are subsequent revival nights, and I've invited uh, some powerful uh, men of God to come in and help me minister to you, and I cannot wait. We're going to we're gonna see the, the, we're gonna see a move of God, and so I want to encourage you to to be at the Texas Tent Revivals in Cypress, Texas. If you need to get you a hotel room over there for three days, if you want to, if you're in Houston, you want to drive in and out, you do what you need to do. But you need to sign up because the, the seats we only have 500 seats, and they're filling up fast. So Lord, we just love you. We just thank you for the opportunity to to again do what you've asked us to do, to step out in faith. This is a total step out in faith for Pastor Callie. God's the one that made this happen. I heard the voice of the Lord say, he gave me a prophetic word about tents, the Texas tent revivals, with no thought that I'd be a part of that, other than praying and prophesying. Once I delivered the message, he said, will you do the first one? And I said, well, yes, Lord, but I'm 62, like he didn't know my age. And he didn't respond to that. And then I said, yes, we would do the first one. So, you know, I, I really, my expectation is in the Lord. I'm just obeying the Lord. He supernaturally provided the place. He supernaturally provided the tent. We are, uh, the ministry is purchasing or renting everything we need for sound and and uh, so that we can uh, zoom in with Lou across the nation. All the, all the technology piece uh, the ministry is going to get. And so if any of you want to sew into that, you can just go on to colbaytown.com and put the Texas Tent Revivals and sew right into it. Every dime that goes there goes to these tent revivals. So I trust the Lord. I have great faith that every... Every need will be met. I, I, there's no um, fear and there's no hesitation about just obeying God. We are getting into a season of serving the Lord where he is going to want uh, our complete obedience. And he wants, he's always wanted it. But for us to see the glory of the Lord, we are going to step into complete obedience and just do what he's asked us to do. So, Lord, I just thank you for women that just do what you ask us to do. If you tell us to raise up a tent, we, we raise up a tent. If you tell us to go pray for our neighbor, we go pray for our neighbor. If you tell us to sacrifice money or time, we sacrifice money and time. If you tell us to increase our prayer life, we increase our prayer life. If you tell us to fast and to seek you, then we, we do our best to fast and seek you and, and follow your instructions. And I just thank you for women that are sold out to you and to your way, to you and to your plan. You have a plan, God, for us. You have a purpose and you have a destiny. And God, we are stepping into it by faith. We are stepping into it by faith. I um, am going to ask my uh, husband to come on and do communion. We're gonna do it early today. Uh, I have a full day. So I just want to encourage you when we get off this broadcast, spend time praying yourself. Spend some time in your prayer closet. God is going to speak to you this morning and spend time in your prayer closet. Uh, and so I'm going to ask him to come right now. Um, and he's going to lead you in uh, communion. All right. So if you have your communion ready, uh, the scripture I'm focusing on today, which I haven't had the moment to look it up yet, but it's in several gospels where Jesus says, if you're going to be my disciple and follow after me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow. So he's saying that he has a cross that he to, had to bear and he had a plan that he had to sacrifice for and obey God for and die to his own will and his own comfort for in order for us to benefit from it. 
And then he said basically that you will have to take up your own cross. So God has a plan for you and a benefit for others. And it's going to take dying to your own will for, the, for that plan to come into, into place. So uh, Paul said that I die daily. And then he put his body and beat it under control so that his body wasn't telling him what to do. And he controlled his, his mind as well. He cast down imaginations and any thought that worked against the, the truth of God and brought it into submission to the truth of God. So that it was not be a stronghold in his mind. So, But it's the whole attitude of, if you're going to follow me, then you're going to have to follow what I did. And which, which is he obeyed God at any cost. And it cost him everything. And so, Lord, we want to not only remember what you did for us, but realize that you're asking us to follow you as your example. And so, Lord, forgive us when we're trying to hold on to our own life. Forgive us when we try to do life our way. And forgive us when we resist and rebel against the sacrifices necessary to see your kingdom come and your will be done in our life. So for the benefit of the kingdom of God and for the glory of God and the benefit of others, Lord, it's not about us. We're laying down our life. So Lord, we thank you for what you did and you showed us the way. So Father, we remember your body today. We thank you for what you accomplished through your beaten and bloodied body that was tortured and hung on a tree and took upon all the sins of the world and all the pains of the world and all the shortcomings and everything and you, you, you pinned it to the tree and the price was paid for our freedom. The price was paid for us to be free to serve you, free to love you, not free just to do whatever we want. So Lord, we thank you for your blood. The price of the covenant was your life exchanged for our life. And now we live life not for ourselves because it was a gift from you. And so what are we going to do with our life? We're going to lay it down. Our own plans, our own ideas, our own likes, our own comforts for the good of the kingdom of God and for the love that we have for you, Lord. So if we don't have enough love to obey you today or to sacrifice or to surrender, I pray that you would help us to increase our love relationship with you. If we don't want to obey, then our love is lacking because the Bible says that we obey his commands and his commands are not a burden to us. Why? Because we love. Because we love you, we want to please you. So Lord, we just help us today to love you enough to obey you, to love you enough to lay down our lives and do what it takes to see your kingdom come and your will be done. God bless you. Thank you for praying with us today.